hi in this video i'm going to show you how to perform advanced dynamic filter with checkboxes in excel the checkboxes is located in the insert tab of the ribbon and it allows us to display and edit true and false values so we're going to see how we can use them in our formula to perform advanced calculation enough of talking let's get started now we're going to be playing around with this sample sales data set and of course the data is officially stored in an excel table i can double check in the table design contextual ribbon tab and i can see data as the table name and of course we want to perform or go through this criteria we want to filter this data set to display the records for the account manager named Tina John and Connor Rulibet with customer type segments that equal to small business and home office with total sales that is greater than or equal to 3000. I'm going to show you how we perform dynamic selection of column based on filtered results in the past and then I'm going to show you the modern way to do that with the name checkboxes. So let's see. I'm going to come to cell I5 and type in the filter. Now, the first argument of the filter is the array. So I'm going to select the entire data set from the top here, excluding the headings, put in a comma. Now, for the include argument, since we want to perform the records for account manager that equal to Tina John and Conroly Bates, I'm going to open two brackets. So for the first one, I'm going to come to column C and check the account manager. Are you equal to tina john in i2 close the brackets now this is going to be a all logical operation so i'm going to use the plus math operator open the second bracket again account manager the many side are you equal to corner relevant in cell j2 close the two brackets for now close the filter let's see what this is delivering when i hit control enter there we go so we can see this return all the columns and of course we can see the account manager equal to Connor Rulibet and Tina John. Lovely. Let's undo this customer type that equal to small business and home office. So double click in the top cell. And of course, I'm going to get rid of the closing brackets and I'm going to use the multiplication. This is going to be and logical operation. So two opening brackets. Again, I want to check the customer type in column B, are you equal to small business in K2, close the bracket, and then for the or, I'm going to use the plus sign, open another bracket, and again, the customer type in column D, are you equal to the home office, so close the two brackets, and then I can close the filter for now, and let's double click or click control enter, and there we go, so this return the account manager for Tina John and Connor Rulibet. And of course, for the customer type, we have the small business and home office. This is fine. Now let's undo the last criteria, which is the total that is greater than or equal to 3,000. So double click in the top cell. Again, I'm going to delete the closing bracket. And again, multiplication sign to perform the and, open the bracket, and then want to check the total in column G. Are you greater than or equal to 3,000? Close the bracket for the total column and then close the bracket for the filter control enter there we go you can see these are all the records that satisfied the criteria we specified and of course you can see we have 11 counts of transaction now this actually returned all the columns but we want to return the specific three columns the customer type product name and the total so i'm going to come to the top cell now this is what i do in the past i'm going to nest another filter outside and it's going to be the input value for the array argument of the outermost filter and then i'm going to put in a comma now for the include i'm going to use the count ifs or the count if now for the count ifs, i'm going to provide the criteria range one this is going to be the unique columns that i want to return put in a comma now for the criteria one this is going to be the original column from the data set so you can close off the count ifs and then I can check what this is delivering. It's going to return 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on and so forth. 0 simply means, hey, don't give me that column. 1 simply means, hey, return the column in your final result. 
So I can close off the outermost filter and control enter. There we go. So we can see the customer type, the product name, and the total. Now, the amazing part of this calculation is that when I change this to account manager, I want to change the product name to account manager. There we go. It's dynamically updated. This is cool. Now, we want to see how we can use the new tick boxes to control the filter. So I'm going to come to the top cell here. This very include arguments. So I'm going to grab this and replace with the check boxes in row number three. That's cool. When I hit enter, this is going to return a calc because, of course, no particular tick box is already checked. But when I check this product name, there we go. We have the product names. Now I'm going to uncheck that and we have the calc. So we can actually treat the calc error nicely. So I'm going to come to the last argument of the filter, the if empty. So I can actually use the double code to give me empty string. So when I control enter again, of course, this returned nothing. I'm going to delete this or clear all these labels or the headings. So let's clear all. And this is where the formula is. Double click. Now that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this calculation in my let formula. So let's continue in the formula bar. So I'm going to come to in the formula bar and alt enter. And I'm going to press ctrl shift u to expand the formula bar. So I think let's just indent this to make it a little bit readable. Control or alt enter. I'm going to come here. Let's just I'm going to press alt enter. I think this is more better. So I'm going to use the let function, which allows us to assign calculations to names. So for the first argument, the name one, I'm going to call this one filtered results, just a label, a name, and it's going to govern the name value of this calculation. Lovely. Let's just check around. I'm going to put in a comma. Now for the temporary calculation, you can actually call the name one, which is filtered result. I can close up the bracket and I hit enter. This returned nothing again because no checkbox has been checked. When I check account manager, of course, this return the account manager's name based on this criteria. I'm going to clear the checkbox. I'm going to come to the cell. Okay, this cell. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back to the let, and this is going to be the name one. I'm going to press Alt Enter. So let's create a new name one. I'm going to call this one error. Put in a comma. Now, put in another comma. So carefully come inside this name value one. In this case, I'm going to use the filter function because I want to return all these original headers. And for the include argument, I want to return all the checkboxes in row number three. That's fine. And then don't forget to close off the filter. And there we go. Now, let me just check around. Let me check this. or Let's just evaluate this in a header name. So I'm going to delete this and type in the header, call it. When I hit Control Enter, of course, this return an error. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back to the same filter, the one we just you know, created, put in a comma. So if empty, we want to return an empty string. Control Enter. That's lovely. Okay. So I'm going to double click. Now let's continue in the formula bar. I'm going to press Alt Enter to move the formula down. So I'm going to get rid of this. Delete. Backspace. Okay. I'm going to press Alt Enter again to jump to the next line. Now, this is what I intend to do. I actually want to stack them vertically using the vstack function. So, for the name three, I'm going to call this one calc, put in a comma. For the name value three, I'm going to use the vstack function, which vertically stacks array into an array. So, press the tab key. So, for the first argument, I want to actually stack this header. So, I'm going to call that header, put in a comma. And then for the array two, I'm going to call the filtered results. I can close up the brackets and then I can put in a comma. Now, for the final calculation, I'm going to just call this calc name that we define. So, calc and close the brackets for the length. Now, this is the moment of truth. When I hit control enter, this will return nothing. Fine. Now, let's see, use the checkboxes to control the results. So, when I check account manager first, I can say, hey, we have the list of account manager's name and the heading. Lovely. So let's say I want to check the total. So just click on the total in column G. And there we go. So we can see the total column and the account manager.
Now, let's want to include the customer type. Now, the customer type is actually coming before the account manager. So when I check this customer type, there we go. You're going to see the customer type first, then the account manager, and then we have the total. Let's I want to include the you know product with the checkbox. There we go. We have the product name. Let's I want to include the unit. That's it. Lovely. And I can even uncheck. So when I uncheck the product, there we go. It's gone. When I uncheck the account manager, it's gone. I can even add the order date. There we go. So you can see the order date, customer type, unit, total. So this is basically how we can use the amazing checkboxes to control the columns we want to return based on our filtered results. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, you know, like it, share with your friends, and comment. Thank you and bye for now. Cheers.